In this video, I'm going to present the brain health benefits of DHEA and DHEAS. DHEA and DHEAS are neurosteroid hormones. DHEA can cross the blood-brain barrier, but not DHEA, DHEAS because it's sulfated and polar. DHEA is produced from cholesterol in mitochondria, and cholesterol through enzymatic reactions is converted to pregnenolone, another very important neurosteroid hormone. Pregnenolone then can be converted to DHEA in smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and DHEA is sulfated in cytoplasm to become DHEAS. DHEAS is often rapidly metabolized from DHEA in smooth ER. DHEA and DHAS are involved in a lot of neurobiological pathways shown here in this picture. And by involving in this mechanism, mechanistic pathways, they can promote neurogenesis, neuronal survival, and neuronal, neural protection. And therefore, these two compounds have been widely investigated for their potential therapeutic effects in a number of neurological and neuropsychiatric diseases. In this presentation, I'm going to particularly focus on three diseases, depression, schizophrenia, and dementia. It's important for us to know first the long-term and wide effects of depression, schizophrenia, and dementia. For depression, it's associated with higher level of failure to complete secondary school. So these patients usually had, have a lower educational level. It's also associated with unemployment, negative parental and marital functioning, and more likely to develop other chronic diseases. For schizophrenia, longer duration of untreated psychosis is associated with poor social functions. If left untreated for a long time, it could also develop suicidal attempts, drug abuse, anxiety disorders, etc. For dementia, it has a high cost of care for one dementia patient. It's around 34,000 per patient. And family caregivers usually experience high level of depression, anxiety, and other type of burden. Given this long-term effects of depression, schizophrenia, and dementia, it's important for us to take actions to prevent them from happening or to treat them as soon as symptoms arise. In depression, patients usually have lower excitatory signaling, including NADA receptor function that's associated with excitatory signaling in our brain, as well as glutamer excitatory glutamergic signaling. Patients also have increased inflammation in brain, oxidative stress, and cortisol level. It's also suggested that catecholamines, including dopamine and norepinephrine, can be treatment for depression. And importantly, DHEA can put and DHEAS can potentiate excitatory signaling in our brain. It can reduce inflammation, oxidative stress, and cortisol level and it can also increase synthesis and secretion of catecholamines. Since mechanistically, DHA and DHEAS can counteract the dysfunction, neurological dysfunction in depression, DHEA and DHEAS can be useful for depression. And indeed, in a systematic review of 22 clinical studies show that DHEA treatment is, can be promising for depression and depressive symptoms. And this is, a this is a graph extracted from this review. They plotted out the data from four out of 22 references they look at. And then in this, in this studies, they all show that as time goes by, DHEA intervention can reduce HMD or Hamilton depression ratings scale score in depressive patients, and therefore DHEA can be useful for alleviating depression. For schizophrenia, patients usually have reduced NMDA receptor function 
and the reduced dopamine in the mesocortical projection. And DHEA and DHEs have been found to pot be able to potentiate this MADA receptor function and as well as increasing dopamine. Interestingly, DHEA and DHEAS level change drastically before and after schizophrenia treatment. At the first episode of schizophrenia, patients usually have elevated DHEAS level, and since DHEA is, DHEAS is rapidly metabolized from DHEA, this increased DHEAS could also mean increased DHEA level in these patients. However, if left untreated, this the level of DHEAS then goes down. But upon treatment, it's found that the, these patients again have elevated DHEA level, suggesting that DHEA may be associated with better, better improving symptoms in schizophrenia patients. So therefore, it's also suggested that this increase of DHEAS at the first episode could actually be a protective mechanism of our body to prevent us from being from being severely attacked by the first schizophrenia episode. However, treatment is important or else there will be consistent blunting of DHEA, DHEA as level that could cause worsening of the symptoms. In this clinical study, they gave patient a uh, schizophrenia patients six weeks of DHEA therapy, maximum dose of 100 mg per day. And this, some of these patients also took antipsychotics. And eventually they found that these patients have increased DHEA and DHEAS level. And then there's also improvement of negative depressive anxiety symptoms in these patients. This, this is a graph from the paper. And it's shown that uh, black circle, black square lines as DHEA patient group, and this white circle line is showing placebo group. And in all of these neuropsychiatric scores, DHEA, DHEA receiving patients all have lower scores indicating better performance in this in this scale. Therefore, DHEA can be useful for treating symptoms in associated with schizophrenia. DHEA can also be useful for dementia. Importantly, it's found that as age goes by, in both females and males, our DHEA as level in the serum goes down. And in the pa in demented patients, it's also found that there's low DHEAS to cortisol level or low DHEAS to DHEA level. And preclinically, DHEA and DHEAS was found to be had, was, was found to have anti-amnestic effect, anti-oxidative stress effect, and anti-amyloid beta effects, which this is a biological marker for Alzheimer's disease. So in this study, they gave patient unmedicated Alzheimer patients six months of 100 mg per day of DHEA, and they assessed the uh, Alzheimer's score using this AD assessment scale cognitive scores, and the lower rating means a better performance in these patients. The black line is showing DHEA patients, and the black dotted line show in, is showing placebo, patient, placebo group. The left graph shows the data from all patients, including those withdrawal between month 3 and month 6. And this data show only those who completed the study. And it's obvious that both of, in both of this data, DHEA group had much better performance or lower rating in this ADAS cognitive, sc cognitive scale compared to placebo group. However, this, does, this did not reach statistical significance, 
possibly due to underpower as a result of small sample size, which is uh, 33 patients. Still, although there is no statistical significance, it's showing a trend of improvement for these patients that receive DHEA, and therefore DHEA could still be promising for treating Alzheimer's disease if there are if there are more larger studies that's done to assess its level to assess its effect on AD patients. So in the future, there should be more studies on how DHEA and DHEA's ratio to other hormones can become biomarkers for neurological or neuropsychiatric diseases, because if it's defined, then this ratio could become predictors for a person. Uh, likelihood of getting neurological or neuropsychiatric diseases. There should be also assessment of the efficacy and established guidelines for DHEA monotherapy or adjunctive therapy, which means therapy that also, that also include other type of drugs for brain diseases. And of course, there should be larger and longer clinical studies, especially on dementia and schizophrenia, because these two diseases are, as of now, there, there are only a few that's done to assess the DHEA's effect on these two types of diseases. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching.